let's cut it open. Nice, confident slice. Look at how gorgeous that is. I mean, hello. Hey guys, it's Esther. Today, I'm gonna show you how to make onigirazu, which is also known as a rice sandwich. I really love this because it's so easy to make and it's so beautiful and you'll love it. The two that I'm making today is gonna be a Korean barbecue one and also tofu katsu. So one will be vegetarian, one will be more like meat driven. So let's get into it. So the first thing is we wanna marinate our meat. I have a thinly sliced ribeye over here. You can also get like shaved steak. I know that they sell that at the market or you can ask your butcher to um, slice your meat really thin for you. And it's kind of like cheesesteak meat. This marinade is really simple. It's just clove of garlic. I'm just gonna mince. Add that. And then we have some soy sauce. Sesame oil. Some mirin, which is a rice cooking wine. And sugar. Keeping it really simple because this is supposed to be a very easy, simple recipe. Give it a nice mix. And I mean, ideally you want to do this overnight. It's just easier if you have this the night before. But honestly, because the meat is so thinly sliced, it will marinate in like 30 minutes to an hour. Okay, that's it. We'll set this aside while we prep our other ingredients. Okay, so now for our vegetables. And I love doing this because I think of all the different textures, the colors, and really you can use whatever you want for this. For me, I love cucumber, some carrots, lettuce, avocado is awesome, tomato. Basically, whatever you would want to put in a regular sandwich, you can put into your onigirazu. It's just a fun way to um, think of a sandwich, right? Uh, people think bread, but you know, you're replacing the bread with rice. It's awesome. Starting with a cucumber, I'm using a mandolin. You see how quick that is? And I love that it's so consistent as well. And you can basically do this in like no time. I also have cabbage. Traditionally, katsu is served with some sort of slaw, so I thought it would be a nice addition to the sandwich. Um, so regular cabbage, I'm gonna shave it super thin. So I love that you can get it as thin as you like, and I always feel like for slaw, it should be like super paper thin. I have these like radishes. I love this because it gives a, such a pretty color, and you'll see later on what I mean by that. So just a quick shave on the mandolin. Grab our carrot. I'm gonna just give it a quick julienne. These I want thinly sliced. I feel like it's a better texture when you bite into it in the sandwich. And then let's do tomato. So avocado, veggies are ready. Okay, so for our slaw, keeping it really nice and simple, I'm using a plant-based mayo. And the reason I'm doing that is because we're doing tofu katsu and I want this uh, sandwich to be completely plant-based. And then we have some lemon for acid. Freshly ground black pepper. Pour some salt. My special edition, a little bit of wasabi paste. But you could just use mustard if you don't have this. Okay, and then we'll just give it a quick toss. Mmm, love the wasabi. Actually, one additional thing that I'm gonna add, a little sugar, because I feel like um, it needs a tiny bit of sweetness to balance out the, the mayo and then the acid. Just a little bit. And that's perfect. I'm gonna set that aside. Okay, so let's make our tofu katsu. It's super simple. You just want a block of firm tofu. So we'll just pat it down dry with paper towel. And then we'll just do some big slices. 
I would say half an inch, relatively thick. So a little salt and pepper. So let's turn on our pan. And I would say good amount of oil because we are pan frying. We want this to get really nice and crispy. So we have cornstarch. And then I have almond milk. And obviously this is the replacement for the egg. I like the nuttiness of the almond milk. And then we have panko, which we would just want to make sure we coat it all very nicely. So we'll start dropping our tofu. I love tofu katsu because it's so easy and healthy. And it's another fun way to eat tofu. Some of these are ready to flip. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And when this, when it's all brown, it's pretty much ready. It's not simple. Take them out, lay them on a paper towel to drain out the excess oil. That's good. That's it. Okay, so now let's cook our bulgogi that's been marinating. Um, just high heat on a pan and saute. This cooks relatively quickly. I'd say about three, four minutes. It's so thinly sliced, it'll just cook in no time. I love this, it smells so good. The soy, the mirin, the sesame oil, the nuttiness, perfect. Now the key is you want to kind of use a pan with a large surface because there is a good amount of moisture that um, seeps out of the meat. So you definitely want all of that to evaporate and caramelize. It's a very classic Korean barbecue meat dish. So good. Bulgogi, pul means fire, gogi means meat. So it's like fire meat. And normally you're doing this you know, on a wok or a stove top and getting some of that like fiery flavor to it. But you can see now after a few minutes, all the moisture has evaporated and it's starting to get like caramelized and you can definitely see it in the color. It's like getting nice and thick, super delicious. Okay, that looks good. It's pretty much done. Yummy. Okay, so our last piece of the prep is the rice. Um, so I have cooked short grain rice here, and this is a rice that you wanna use for this because it's kind of sticky and you need that for this. It's the same rice as sushi rolls or kimbap, and um, it, it has really nice texture and works perfectly for this. Seasoning with some salt and sesame oil. and a little bit of rice vinegar. So make sure that all of your kernels are coated. Okay, now our rice is ready and we are ready to assemble. So first thing, nori. This is seaweed. Um, usually with seaweed, there is a rough side and a shiny smooth side. And in this case, we always wanna do the shiny part down. So we're gonna work on the surface of the rough um, side and this is a tip if you have like a bowl of water next to you then the rice won't stick to your hand so I always like to dip my fingers in there and then we'll grab a little bit of the rice and we don't want to go too thick and you might want to do this a few times until you get the hang of it but um, basically you just want to get a little bit of the rice and make a little square and I like to try to get it as thin as possible because I like filling it with like all the vegetables and protein and not too much rice. Let's do the brugogi one first, which is our marinated ribeye. So I'm gonna do lettuce. This seems a little big, so we'll just tear it in half. We just wanna make sure everything fits in this square, right? So we'll do that. Okay, and then we'll get grab our meat. And then put it straight on top, like so. 
It's kind of like whatever you want to put in um, the sandwich, right? I guess I'll go with a tomato. I'll also go with some avocado. I love avocado. And I think the creaminess works really nicely with the uh, meat. To end it, we'll get some more rice. Just cover the top. Okay, so at this point, we're just gonna fold over the nori. And then we'll tuck the edges in a little like that. And like I said, it, it won't really matter because you're gonna use plastic wrap to kind of like shape it. But it's kind of like wrapping a present. Flip it over. And then we'll get some plastic wrap. The plastic wrap will help secure it and you can shape it really nicely. And it'll hold everything together. Okay. And we'll just like fold it really tightly, like so. Right? And then at this point with the plastic wrap, you can kind of shape the onigirazu. We'll cut that open in a minute after we assemble our tofu. Beautiful pieces of tofu, like that. And then I think with tofu, let's do some cucumber. Our beautiful slaw that we made, which the creaminess will be really nice with the crunchy tofu. And remember with katsu, it's pretty traditional to eat it with some slaw. So that's why we're assembling it in, to our sandwich. And then for some color, I think I'm gonna do some radishes. And like I said, you can do whatever you want. You can mix and match. And this is the fun of it. Ending it with a little bit more rice. Really, this could be like a snack, it could be a great lunch. But honestly, for me, picnic. This is like the ultimate picnic item. Let's do the folding again. I'd like to start from the bottom. Beautiful. We have our purugogi onigirazu. We have our tofu katsu onigirazu. I know you guys are dying to see what it looks like inside. So let's cut it open. Nice, confident slice. Beautiful, look at that. I mean, it's gorgeous. Katsu is normally served with a katsu sauce, so I'm gonna put a little bit of this um, brown sauce on it. It's like a, the traditional katsu sauce, and I'll just kind of do this beautiful. It's the meat one, I'm just gonna taste it. Mmm. It's so fun to eat. Mmm. That is so delicious. Wow. Mmm. I really have to taste the tofu one because I'm so curious. Wow. Mmm. That is awesome. You guys have to try to make this at home. Make it for your family, make it for your friends. The weather is getting nice. Make it, take it to the park. It's just perfect. Hope you enjoy my recipe, guys. Bye.